Welcome back to Dark Corner Streaming. We're looking at feature-length documentary Flesh and Blood, The Hammer Heritage of Horror, which you can stream on Amazon Prime and which is suitably narrated by Christopher Lee. So I tried to play the character like an ill-coordinated, childish creature. And Peter Cushing. Luckily, I had a break in my BBC work and was able to take the role I'd seen Codden Clive play in the original 1931 film. Whose age tells in his voice, and this would be the veteran actor's last performance. He became known as Props Peter. Now, obviously, I am going to enjoy a documentary about Hammer, but with the caveat, as long as it's done right. This is two and a half hours, far longer than any Hammer film, so I'm not just going to rubber stamp it because I love the films. The first thing to be glad about is that this is not just about the gothic horrors, going right back to Hammer's origins, and not ignoring their other films, which are so often overshadowed. Uh, Hell is a City, one of the first and the strongest of the police type of drama. I mean, the forerunner of all the things that eventually came out on television. Also, they've assembled a wealth of interviewees who were there at the time. Producers, directors, writers, and the men who ran the studio, as well as actors. At that moment, I was being bitten by Dracula, and I believed it. When it does wheel out the celebrity fans, there are always people with something to say. A musical score going on. I mean, the music of these movies was really astonishing. Uh, and I'll never forget the audience's reaction that midnight showing at the New York Paramount. It was, they loved it. It was a particularly uh, big moment in my life and the life of a lot of kids my age, yeah. Given this is made by Hammer, it would be easy to fall into hagiography. But while it does celebrate the studio's highs... And you then said, gentlemen, this film of yours will lift Universal out of bankruptcy. It does not shy away from the difficulties. One just had to do it in the time that was allotted, and it was never enough. And missteps. It didn't work. Um, it was a mistake. And when was the last time you heard a documentary narrator airing a personal grievance? I stopped making them in 1972 because, in my opinion, the presentation of the character had deteriorated to such an extent, particularly bringing him into the contemporary day and age, that it really no longer had any meaning. Though Peter Cushing is there to provide balance. Nevertheless, when the cameras rolled, we both gave it everything we had. This emphasis on the personal does sometimes get in the way of the facts. That was before I did Dracula. I think I'm right in saying this. I'm sure if I'm wrong, I'll be instantly corrected. He is wrong, but is not corrected, and it's not the only time this happens, which in a documentary is a little irritating. The critics hated us. Also awkward, if you're not familiar with the studio's history, is that rather than proceeding chronologically, the film deals with the Frankenstein franchise, then the Dracula franchise, then the other films. Even then, stopping to deal with the other series, like the prehistoric films or Carmilla films, as if they were shot back to back. The Viking Queen. Maybe that's the only way to do it, but if you're covering the history as well as the films, then it does feel like the studio went downhill in the same way three times. But in a way, that's quintessentially Hammer. It's entertainment first and foremost, delivered with a flourish. Frankenstein created Hammer. Despite its length, this really rattles along. A great primer if you're new to the studio. I, Baron Frankenstein, was sentenced to death on the guillotine. But I have escaped the guillotine, and I shall avenge the death of my creation. And full of trivia for those who've already seen every film and read every book. And that monster was, in fact, a piece of tripe. Above all, the documentary confirms what I have always thought about Hammer. It was like being in Rome. The flesh and blood of the title has a double meaning. Jimmy Carreras somehow or other managed to create a sense of family in the company and amongst the company of actors, uh, technicians and so on, who all worked over and over again on Hammer Films. And this theme is returned to time and time again. It was a really small family, permanent unit. Making this a documentary with real heart. I'm not giving you bullshit. They were made by people who cared. So in answer to my first question, yes, they've done it right. 
Thanks for watching. Please check out our other Hammer videos. If Hammer were to return to any of their classic films today, which would you choose to be remade, rebooted, updated or whatever? Let us know in the comments below.